In this session of the agenda number five, we're looking at using other file types or formats and bringing those import into CorelDRAW or importing those into CorelDRAW. We're going to look at using Corel Trace another time, and then we're going to look at working with the Shape tool. So to begin, we're going to look at importing a logo of other file types. Earlier we mentioned the different kinds of file types from pixels to lines. Um, we're going to look at Corel Trace and using the Shape tool. So I believe it's important to kind of, again, have a handle on what kind of file you have. I'll review the view and wireframe is very helpful in showing if we have something that's made of lines or made of pixels. For example, this graphic here, we can definitely see that shape, the lettering is made of lines, but this is very pixelated. So view and enhance shows us a, a lot of information on what we really have to work with. When importing logos of different file types, it's important to maybe have an expectation of what you're going to get. So let's look at importing maybe a DXF or a DWG or an EPS file. Um, let's import a logo as a DXF or DWG. Now, DXF and DWGs are commonly found in CAD, either AutoCAD, DesignCAD, SolidWorks, CAD drawing files. If we were to import um, let's say a graphic let's see maybe if we were to import a picture of this shuttle we would see that AutoCAD or DesignCAD use a lot of elements to draw the skeleton view of a particular product um, so those are all built by lines now these types of uh, software, software packages actually are created in 3D space so they have spacing elements and design backdrops that we don't have in CorelDRAW, which is just 2D. Therefore, sometimes when you import a DXF file that has been done in some of these 3D uh, programs, you might get some hidden things that you didn't quite catch. In other words, if we import, let's go down and find our Batman. Uh, let's find our Batman DWG. So we're going to choose Import. And when you're importing an AutoCAD file, CurlDraw is reminding you that you can tell it to reduce as many nodes as possible. Um, and you should probably check the one-to-one -one English. Sometimes it will be set to automatic and have a different size. So I would recommend probably choosing the English one-to-one -one, uh, relationship. That way you're getting the true size that you need, one-to-one. -one. So if we click on OK, when you're importing a graphic in CorelDRAW, it gives you the name of the file, Batman DWG, along with the width and the height. Now you can click and drag to resize it or push enter to center it on the page. I'm just going to push enter and that's going to center it on the page. Um, now this is quite large. I'm going to move it down a little bit over to the side. And let's just see, take a look at what, these, uh, what this part is made of. If I select this one curve, in fact, let's make that curve red. So by right-clicking, we can see that that color is red. Let's click on the inside. Aha, we see something a little different. Let's, like, let's make this one red. Uh, so we made the circle yellow, this color red. And we can see that because it was built in CAD, that it's not quite bringing it in as we might expect, where they're all connected and everything contoured. So you have to be on guard sometimes even if this was built in 3D space for example you might get one of these lines that are duplicated right on top of each other now right now that's a segment and being that these are two different segments you might be hoping man I hope I can fill that in by left clicking on the black to engrave it well that's not the case because it's not connected therefore we need to make sure that number one you don't have duplicated lines for example if that was built in a 3D space it might have done something like this. Let's make our duplicate distance zero. So when you were to bring that in, it might have six of those. Now you can visually see that that's a little thicker and sometimes you can see it and sometimes you can't. But if you were to send this over to vector, it would engrave that six times. And if you're cutting that out of acrylic, you may catch a fire there and engraving too many passes in acrylic or wood. So that could be a fire hazard if you're not paying close attention to how many lines are found under those 3D model space graphics. Okay, so let's undo each of those to have just the one. 
And what we're going to do is zoom up on the logo. And we're going to select the right side and the adjoining side. Now we have two objects selected. What's important to note is that we want to combine these two sides together. If we just go up to object and group those together, that doesn't change the property or the characteristic of the lines. It doesn't put those in the same plane, so to speak, to work on together to create an object from. Therefore, grouping really wouldn't be the way to go. We could group it, um, but if we left click on a color, it still doesn't fill it. So let's ungroup those. And then now that those two are still selected, I'm going to go up to Object and choose Combine. Now, Combine doesn't fill it right away, but you might know that if we left click on a color here, it still didn't fill it. Why not? Most likely because, because it was done in CAD, some of these adjoining nodes and things aren't connected. Um, now sometimes you might see some telltale signs of some nodes that are uh, not connected, like they'll just visibly, visibly be seen not touching. Uh, but other times it's a little harder to tell. Now there is a tool we can use if we really don't want to go find each one of these nodes that is not connected and connect it to make it fill properly we might want to use a very powerful tool called the Smart Fill tool. By clicking on the Smart Fill tool, let's look at the definition. That creates objects from an overlapping area and applies a fill to those objects. So up in our Fill options for our Smart Fill tool, it's going to fill that. Let's tell it to fill it green. So we are going to click with our Smart Fill tool, not the Pick tool, but the Smart Fill tool, inside this area and sees what it gets. Oh, awesome. That's what we want. So basically what that did was that created the outline for um, the outer part of the man. So we could really come in and get rid of that line that we didn't need. Let's open our object manager so we can best see what we have. Here is the curve. So if we take that curve and move it off to the side a moment, that is all one curve. And you can see these other elements that really weren't connected. Let's uh, zoom out a bit. Let's move this off over here. In fact, this might be one of those cases where you want to lock down a layer. So you might want to create yourself a lock layer and place things in that layer that um, you don't want to move. So things like the yellow line and the black line those two lines selected we want to move into the lock layer and we're gonna lock that down now you can see that as I select let's move the green sky out of here so as we select that that part is just not even touching not even touching so we can really get rid of those that aren't touching that aren't in use and so that's really what we wanted Oh, and you can see how the CAD file wasn't connecting all of these, and that's why it wasn't filling that. Therefore, um, let's move a little to the left, and let's get rid of these objects. Now, I want to center this inside these ovals, so I'll have to reactivate or unlock the lock layer. And then now I can select one of the ovals, push the letter P. No, not P, I'm sorry. We have to... Arrange. I didn't cover this earlier, so I'm covering the Arrange menu where we would go to Align and Distribute, um, now called Object. So you're going to select the object you want to move to by holding the Shift key, the object that you want it to move to. Um, so let's go to Object, Align and Distribute. And we see that we have some hotkeys here for aligning centers to each other, and that is E and C. So I am going to select the Batman. Let's make him black. And then let's left click on the circle here and push the letters E and C. So it moved the Batman to the ellipse because I had that selected in the correct order which is select what you want to move first, shift select the second object that you want to move it to. So now we have the oval object and we have the outline. Let's go ahead and combine those two because if we fill those black, 
that fills over all of that. What we're going to do is make a donut out of these two outer ovals by going to object and combine. And you see that the yellow took on the properties of the black only because of the order that we selected it. Had we selected the other first, then it would have been yellow. Doesn't matter for this case, but we want those both of those to fill. Um, so now at this point, we might want to um, select a certain area to be, maybe we want this to be yellow behind here. So if I just click on yellow, that's not, that's not an object to fill, right? So that's just a ring. Another beautiful tool is the Smart Fill tool to be able to, what that does, creates an object from overlapping areas and applies a fill to it. So let's apply yellow to that fill. There we go. And then we're going to click right here. So there we have our Batman logo that's edited from a DXF. Hopefully you get a little more mileage out of using the DXF and DWGs. The DWG file uh, typically is used, and when you import that in, it's used as a drawing file. So you get all of the information, the lines, the kind of the worksheet of the logo uh, from CAD, the uh, title of the, the worksheet, the author, and so forth. Um, also, I'll just briefly touch on this real quick, that there was one case, a cut, one version or two back to where people were importing EPS files into CorelDRAW. And this is especially true for your older CorelDRAW versions like X5 and X4. If you try and import an EPS file and you get an error that it won't work, it's because you need to upgrade. Meaning you're trying to import an EPS or an Adobe file that has, uh, had been updated but your CorelDRAW has not. And the only way to do that is to update, update your CorelDRAW. So, um, now sometimes you can try instead of, if I wanted to import a graphic, I might want to use, uh, instead of EPS, use the PS format. So sometimes this would, uh, the PS format would work better um, as a, a format to bring in. So for you older CorelDRAW users, that might help. All right. I think that's it for the CAD. And we would want to finish by grouping these together. Control G to group. Push the letter P to center. Hold the shift key down to resize that. Nudge that down with the arrow keys. And we're good. Now, as we look at finding artwork, um, let's look at Google. And we're going to show the search tools. And I did this in a in the previous tab, but may want to cover that once more. So if we were looking for, let's say, the Batman logo, then I just want you to be aware that you have search tools that you can search for different images of Batman. Uh, you can search just by going to uh, size. You only want to want the, the large artwork. Uh, maybe you want uh, only black and white artwork. Uh, maybe you want line drawings or uh, clip art illustrations. So uh, all of that can be adjusted for your liking on what you're looking for uh, to put into your laser machine. Um, there is a website called brandsoftheworld.com. So if I were to go to uh, brandsoftheworld.com, this is a uh, non-fee-based website that has all vector artwork and everything and it's free of charge you just have to create a username and password and if you don't want to create a username and password I believe they let you just select um, as long as you can click on the I agree um, that you're not just a computer saving their data then um, they'll give you a code to type in um, but if we were to search for a logo let's say um, Dallas Cowboys if it finds your particular logo, that's great because the, everything in here that it finds is all vector. And this is fantastic because now if I wanted to download this Dallas Cowboys logo, this is all vector. It's not a bitmap. So I would tell it, and notice what format. Vector format is AI. So we're going to tell it, I agree. I'm not a robot and I want to download it. I'm not a robot. Uh, 
select all images with trees so we've got trees and trees trees trying to verify that we're not a, a robot just downloading their stuff so uh, now we're ready to download and being that it's vectorized now we're able to import that into CorelDRAW so let's go to our import button and we'll go to downloads here's our Cowboys AI file so choose import and I'm going to click and drag a box and bring that right in uh, let's see so there is our object and it has full color you could break this apart it is seven different objects so it's important that when you bring in vector that you know you can break those apart and edit those and manipulate those as needed okay but that is one of the benefits of using um, vector artwork with things like brandsoftheworld.com uh, that you can get those saved all right clip art and many other websites um, where can I find fonts there are actually um, fonts that you can download uh, from heraldsfonts.com or myfonts and in fact if you have a name of something let's type out say uh, my font here and let's say this was a scanned image let's convert this to a bitmap so bitmaps convert to bitmap something that CorelDRAW offers is to be able to view and identify a font. So this is not a font because I converted it to a pixel, to a bitmap. If that was a business card that was scanned and I was looking for that font, I can go to bitmaps, and, or actually, no, let's see, let's go to text because we're looking for the font. That is, what's the font? So the font is now going to go out to the internet. And what it does is it wants you to drag a box around the area for the letters. When it draws a box around the letters, it would actually go uh, into the internet and search for my fonts. And so it gives you the most uh, commonly used or accepted uh, similar font there. So if we were to do um, myfonts.com, it would actually show you your letters that you keyed in here and try and find a very similar font. Uh, from this website myfonts.com um, I don't have internet on this particular site or on this page on this side of my uh, windows that's okay but basically what that would do is automatically with internet access take you to this site allowing you to find all different kinds of fonts and uh, what the font for font identification all right So that is a very handy tool to use.